I'm almost certain that everybody in here has uh, in high school or wherever, right? We're introduced to following wheel functions because I can remember doing a thing called Descartes School of Signs. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that one or not. You just got to teach that. But uh, that had to deal with polynomial functions. So <laughs> at the top of page one, your handout, right, it gives a formal definition of a polynomial function, right? All P of X. And what a polynomial function is, in a nutshell, it's made up of a sum and difference of what are called monomials. Yes, sir. You certainly can come down here and get one. Certainly. Right? And so a mon monomial is of the form A times X to the K to the blue board. And A is a real number. And K is a non negative integer. Okay. And non negative integers, right, are like K equals zero. One, two, three, four, and so forth. Okay. So an example of monomials, right? Five x squared is a monomial. Okay. Minus three times x to the fifth is a monomial. And just the number ten, right, by itself is a monomial. Right. Because k is equal to zero, x equal to zero is one. And so a polynomial function is a sum and difference of monomials. Poly, in the word polynomial, means many. So a polynomial function right, consists of many nomials. So some examples of functions that are not polynomial functions are f of x equals 5x squared minus 3 times x to the minus 1. Do you know why that's not a polynomial function? That's not a polynomial function. Do you know why? Yes, it's a negative x squared. Yeah, right? This term here has a negative exponent. So this is not a polynomial function. What about g of x equals 2 times x to the 1 half minus 4? Why is that not a polynomial function? Anybody? Because the exponent is not a uh, counting number. Yeah, it's not a positive integer, right? So, right? So these are two cases. That are not polynomial functions. All right. So this is the general form for a polynomial function, right? Which is the sum of polynomials. And the eighth of n. A to n, a to n minus one, a to two, a to one, a to zero. Right? Those are all real numbers. They're called coefficients of the polynomial. And the term with the largest exponent on the variable x, that is called the leading term. And the coefficient in the leading term, this a to n, is called the leading coefficient. Okay? And the 
they determined they need both patients, right, to play an important role in polynomial function. Okay. So the degree of a polynomial function is the term, right, is the largest power of that in the polynomial function. So in example one, <coughs> p of x is equal to 4x to the fifth plus 6x cubed minus 2x plus 1. So the largest power of x in this polynomial function is 5. So n is equal to 5, and that is the degree of this polynomial function. And this polynomial function has degree 5. The coefficient, maybe we should go one step further. 4 times x to the fifth is the leading term in this polynomial function. Right, because this is the term with the largest power of x. And then n equals 5, consequently, is the degree of the polynomial. And the coefficient in the leading term is 4. And so it's 4 is the leading coefficient. In B, the polynomial function is 2x squared minus 3x plus x cubed minus x to the seventh. What's the leading term in that polynomial? Yeah, right? Yeah, it's not the first term. The leading term is not the first term. It's the term with the largest power of x. Yeah? Can I just see it right Yeah, come into this one down here in the blue hole. Okay. If anybody else doesn't have one, right, you can come down here. So the leading term is actually minus x to the seventh which you can read as minus 1 times x to the 7. Okay. The degree then of the polynomial function is 7. And the leading coefficient is minus 1. questions on that? Uh, a power function of degree n is a polynomial of a, a power function. A power function of degree n is a polynomial of the form f of x is equal to a times x to the n, right? It's a power function because it's x to the n and it's degree n because the exponent of the variable x. A is a real number, and N is a positive integer. The graph of the polynomial function is continuous, right? All polynomial functions are continuous. And the domain, this isn't in your notes, you got to add it. The domain of a polynomial function 
What's the domain of all polynomial functions? All real numbers. Remember, the domain applies to the input variable x. Okay? All polynomial functions are continuous, and the domain of all polynomial functions is all real numbers. And we kind of learned that with quadratic functions. Quadratic functions are a type of polynomial, right? They're a polynomial of degree two. All right. So where it says in general, Speaking, so we're talking about the power function. F of x equals a times x to the n. Okay. If the coefficient a is greater than zero, and n is even, right? The degree of the power function is even, right? So when I say n even, right, we're talking like 2, 4, 6, 8, so forth, okay? The graph of the power function resembles that of a parabola. It's U shaped, okay? Now, if n is equal to 2, it is a parabola, but if it's n equals 4, 6, or 8, it's, it opens up like a parabola, but it's not a parabola. Okay. If the coefficient a is negative and n is even, then the graph of the power function opens down. <coughs> and if n is equal to 2, it's a parabola that opens down. If n is some other even integer, it looks like an upside down parabola, but it's not a parabola. If the coefficient a is positive and n is odd, the exponent n is odd. 3, 5, 7, 9, and so forth. Then you know that if n is equal to 3, we have the graph of what is called the cubing function, right? The graph of x, x cubed, right? This is the graph of the cubing function, x cubed. And so if the coefficient a is positive, we have um, the graph looks similar to the cubing function, x cubed. And if A is negative, with the exponent N odd, then the graph, this graph just gets flipped over, and it looks like the graph of the cubic function is flipped over. All right, so that's like the four cases for the power function of degree N based upon um, the degree, whether the degree is even or odd, and whether the coefficient a is positive or negative. Okay. So next, we're going to talk about the in behavior in the graph of a polynomial function. And in the in behavior, we're just talking about what happens on the graph of the polynomial function on the far right end. 
and what happens on the far left end. We don't care what happens in the middle. So in behavior, there's two types of in behavior. There's right in behavior. And there's left in behavior. Okay. And in the graph of polynomial function, the right in behavior, the question is, does the graph go up or does the graph go down? So one of the two things is going to happen in the graph of polynomial function is on the far right end. Okay. Here's the origin. We don't care what happens in the middle. We're only interested in what's going to happen on the far right end. Does the graph go up or does the graph go down? And the same is true on the left end. Does the graph go up? And we can determine, given a polynomial function, what the graph is going to look like on the right end and on the left end. Right? Does the graph go up or does the graph go down on each end? Okay. And that is based upon the leading term. The graph of a polynomial function on its far right end resembles the graph of the power function h of n times x to the n. Right? This is a power function okay, of degree n. So we just take the leading term, and the leading term determines what the behavior of the graph is on the far left end and on the far right end. Okay. So at the bottom of your page, we're going to create a two by two matrix of graphs. We're going to look, look at the leading coefficient, a sub n times x to the n, right, of a, of a polynomial degree n. And in this upper left-hand corner, the leading coefficient, a sub n, is positive, and the degree n is even. Well, when the leading coefficient is positive, so let's make it, I'll write that out, right? When we say a sub n is greater than zero, we mean it's a positive number. Okay. And n even is two, four, six, eight, so forth, right? So when the leading coefficient is positive and the degree is even, the n behavior is like that for a parabola that opens up. The right end is going to go up, and the left end is going to go up. So, in words we can write both ends rise. Both ends go up, or something like that. If the leading coefficient is negative and the degree is even, okay, then the end behavior of the polynomial function resembles that of a, of a parabola that opens down. left end goes down and the right end goes down. Okay. So both ends fall. So when the degree is even, right, either both ends go up or both ends go down. Okay. Next we have the case where the leading 
coefficient is positive, but the degree is off. When that's the case, the in behavior of the polynomial function is like that of the cubing function, right? Where the left end goes down and the right end goes up. Then lastly, we have the case where the leading coefficient is negative and the degree is positive. And when the leading coefficient is negative and the degree is odd, we just have the opposite. The left end goes up and the right end goes down. Behavior is like the cubing function flipped over, where the left end goes up and the right end goes down. All right. Any questions on that? What do you say we take our quiz and get a jump on spring break? Anybody, anybody against that? All right, let's do it.